Hello Action Queens, my name is Dumi Mokokwe. I'll be interviewing queens who are taking action towards fulfilling their life purpose, believing that you will be encouraged and inspired on your personal journey. Our guest today is Mbumi Nzama. She was retrenched from her call center job at the beginning of lockdown in March 2020. Instead of looking for another job, she took the opportunity to start an online nursery business, Succulents Galore, with close to zero capital and very limited resources. In our chat, we find out how she started without capital and how she promotes and advertises her brand for free to drive awareness and ensure the growth of her business during a pandemic. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you if you've already subscribed. Now click on the notification button so you can be notified when a new video is uploaded. Mpumi, now you got retrenched, right? And then you thought of starting a business. Why did you not think I need to look for a job and thought this is an opportunity to start a business? Actually, I needed something which was going to make me happy during this time of, you know, COVID, being laid off, because there was no guarantee. There still isn't a guarantee of, you know, a job and nine to five. So I just thought, let me buy something which will make me happy. And of course, being a person who loves nature, I just thought, let me go to the nursery and find something different, something which is unusual. And I just saw this particular plant, which is a succulent. So I bought them. I started buying, I think I bought two at the time. And then I was told that they don't need much, you know, um, care, so to speak. Um, but they're very resilient plants. So I also started doing my research on how this can help me be happy, you know, finding joy in nature. So so I just needed to learn resilience during this time. And then after a while, I bought those plants and then I thought they actually are growing and they're fast growers. They're beautiful. They have vibrant colors. And I thought, no, I can't be happy alone because I know a lot of people are going through the very same thing that I am experiencing. And then I just thought, let me just, you know, take this business side mm. and then. Yeah, that's how it started. Hence, now it's a business. And I try to be as reasonable as I can with the price range so that everyone can share in this happiness. I came across you on social media, on Instagram, where you were sharing how you got featured in Drum Magazine after starting your business during lockdown. How did that come about, the interview in Drum Magazine? Okay, how that came about was I initially had started, you know, my business and I just thought, um, I just want to put myself out there. And then I inboxed, actually I started on Move Magazine, which was on News24 online. And then okay. after that, yes, and then after that was out there, Drum Magazine called me. I think it was a month later. And then they called me and then they had asked if they can also do a story about, you know, um, my business. So that's how I was on Drum Magazine because I had started on Move Magazine online. Hmm. Where did that idea come about? Because we often hear you need to market yourself, advertise yourself, but we thinking of telling friends and family. Why did you think I need to contact like big publications to say, hey, feature my business? Um, you know, other things, I think they just come naturally or it's just being knowledgeable also, you know, because it's a big company. Um, Move is a big company. So I had started inboxing many magazine companies. It's just not Move. So they had already, you know, got my story and then they just decided, okay, we'll put it out there. But the idea came because I thought I need to put this out there um, so that people can feel the very same way that I do so that I can share this happiness with other people because I was receiving so much happiness from already, you know, a week or two. And I just thought uh, I need to put the story out there with big companies. So you start a business, right? And in two weeks' time, 
you are saying, hey, Move Magazine, feature me. <laughs> I've started <laughs> something. You know? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. I know. That's so cute. Because you didn't think I'm too small for them to, to consider me. No, you know what? Because of the type of plant that I am dealing with, I just thought, thought, find it interesting, you know, because not a lot of people of color, of our color, you know, are very into succulents. So I just thought if I can be maybe the first, you know, black female to put my story out there, other people will also be interested in what I have to, you know, offer. Ah, that's amazing. I'd seen some other people in Soweto um, that do the succulent business, but I haven't seen them elsewhere. What were the next steps that you put in place to, to, to market your business? Because half the time we have the idea, firstly, we don't start. Now that you've started, you're now having to tell the world because your business can be your best kept secret, right? Everybody needs to know that you are doing this. So after yeah. the move magazine, what other things did you put in place to market your business? Okay, other things I put into place was starting social media pages like your Facebook and your Instagram, which is um, Instagram is more prominent now than Facebook, you know, when it comes to business. But I use both. Because, yeah. Because I was of the understanding that if you want to reach the masses, they are on Facebook because the data is cheaper on Facebook than it is on Instagram. Have you found that you got more response on Instagram than on Facebook? Yeah, actually, most of my, you know, customers are from Instagram. And word of mouth spreads more for me, though, on Instagram. So I think it's because of the different you know, pictures and the filters maybe, and how you just don't have to write a very long story, like maybe a line or two, it really grabs people's attention. So I've learned that Instagram for me actually works and it's still growing. It's growing more than the Facebook accounts that I have. And you're right, actually. I mean, Facebook does reach the masses. You are very right in terms of data and it doesn't need a lot of, data and a lot of attention as Instagram does. So mm -hmm. yeah, I have a Facebook page, but it's not as prominent as the Insta. So you ran a promotion to get uh, more followers and I guess to drive awareness. How did that turn out and what, I, what inspired the idea? Okay, what inspired the idea, um, I felt that a lot of people don't know about succulents galore. And then I also checked, you know, insights because there's insights on Instagram. Um, I just felt I was sitting at one number for too long. That was a week. I think I was on 496, I think, followers. And it took a while. And then that's when I started changing my logo on Instagram. I changed the logo and I thought, if I can just run a promotion, I'm sure people will, you know, be very happy to join in. And it went very well because I did it on a Thursday. And then by Monday, I was well over 500, the mark that I had put for myself. So I was, you know, over that and I was just very happy. People really responded. And yeah, I selected randomly um, the winner for that um, prize, of which she was very happy <laughs> about awesome. that. Yeah. Mm. So how have you kept consistent? Because most entrepreneurs would, okay, do their standard Facebook and all of that. But how? what has helped you be consistent in posting and not be wary whether there's a sale or not to keep on mm -hmm. sharing your content? Okay, so in the Instagram, I've got other people I'm following, entrepreneurs. So I would always just read how they had, you know, managed to get to where they are and what they would do. So the consistency. So they would always just mention consistency and not skipping a day without posting. So I make sure I post something every day so that I can grab other people's attention 
and also keep the followers that I have. So it, it helps me a lot actually following other entrepreneurs, even though they're in different spaces, but we all share the same idea as entrepreneurs. Awesome. How does it feel now? You're part of the entrepreneur circle <laughs> after being <laughs> oh, it's an employee. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, it's beautiful. I I never thought it would happen at this rate. Honestly, I I just didn't see it coming. So I'm overwhelmed with joy. Every day I just thank God, you know, I'm just because I, you know, when I started the business, I had prayed for him to show me a sign or to lead me, you know, like just help me decide what to do so that I'm not depressed. You know, because mm-hmm. yeah. And anxiety are the we suffer from one or the other as people. So I, I asked him that he, he could assist me, you know, during this time. So it, it's his hand, you know. I thank him so much. So I'm I'm overwhelmed with joy. I can't explain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I've also seen that you set up WhatsApp for business, right? You don't post any personal things on your WhatsApp. So does this require an additional phone for you to be able to do that? No, actually you do. Oh, I'm doing everything on one phone, actually. So you don't really need a different phone because you can have your own personal WhatsApp and then you download the WhatsApp for business and then you just use a different number so that it's more professional. And also it's good not to mix business with your personal things if it is your personal life at least let it be something really? along the life of what you are doing yes i'm in a garden you can post a picture about that or i'm at a nursery you know it goes with what i am doing or the business that i'm selling so yeah it's very important to separate the two that's amazing you also said that you are using one phone like one phone <laughs> You know, without a laptop, without all the fancy things, and you started and you're making an impact. (laughs) But I guess God will never leave you without a resource. You have that one thing, you know, what you have in your hands. And Mm -hmm. look at what you've achieved with just that one phone. (laughs) Yeah. I'm saying my phone, it's a very strong weapon right now put me where I am because without it I I wouldn't be where I am because I use um you know Google App Store that's how I get to even create you know your catalogs and because there's so many apps there which can assist you with your business so you don't really need anything fancy as long as you've got a, an Android phone or a proper working phone you can just download all those apps and then you're good to go I saw you also have a website and you only have a phone. How did you put that together? Again, I'm going to thank App Store. (laughs) Google App Store. You are kidding me. A whole website from a phone. Yes. (laughs) So there's an app on, I don't know if I should mention names, you know. Yeah, I do. I mean, helping people out there, you know. You know, when I saw... The name of the, the app, it's Equid. So it's spelled as E-C-W-I-D. And then you go there, you download the app, and then you just get to your website. And it doesn't even take a day. I mean, in 30 minutes, you would be done. So basically, right now, I can, or I'm subscribed to 10, you know, plants or 10 products that I can advertise. And then after that, you need to subscribe. And then it's like, what, 100 um, products which you can add to the store. So until I can afford that monthly, you know, subscription, because it's an American company, um, they use dollars. Yes. Until then, I, you know, I just change every week. I add whatever new stock that I have. And I do have people visiting um, the website. It's 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 very, you know, sufficient and efficient. So I'd really request that people go and download that app. Wow. All this for free. For free. <laughs> <laughs> for free. Like, you know what? Everything just falls into place. And also, you need to do research. I must put it out there. 
people do need to do research because this information you wouldn't know of if you do not do research also. So even Facebook does help in a sense that they have these adverts or ads, you know, you want to start a business, do this. So they've got also apps which they advertise, um, you know, via their means. And that's how I got, you know, all this information just through Facebook and, you know, my own research. That's amazing, you know, because, uh, yeah, we think small and what only advertise on WhatsApp and think you need to have a properly established business, maybe with offices or maybe with a track record or have, I don't know, like yeah. before people can take you seriously, you know, yeah. before a News24 um, publication can look at you. You need to have yeah. a track record. But I think your story is powerful because it's a story of starting. You know, it's a story of a beginning with what you have currently, mm -hmm. not waiting for tomorrow, not waiting for circumstances to be better. So mm -hmm. it's, it's truly inspiring. And I'm really honored to have the opportunity to chat to you about it. So you've got all the social media platforms. You've got WhatsApp, you've got a website. What other marketing tactics have you used that you would recommend people to use in their businesses? Okay, I'd recommend that people have business cards and thank you cards. So every time a person buys from you, like they've been buying from me, I've got a business card and a thank you card, which goes with it. So that will always, you know, um, stay with the person that, oh, I bought this plant at Succulents Galore and I've got a thank you card. So that's my way of appreciating. And uh, I run specials, you know, if you buy three, you get one. Or if you buy 10, I sell it at a lower price. So, or I sell the plants at a lower price. So such things are very good marketing strategies so that people can keep coming. What I like about you is that an idea comes into your mind and you go for it without thinking, what will people say? What if, you know, <laughs> all of that. Do you ever wonder, like, or ish, what if I embarrass myself? What if they laugh at me? Has that okay, stopped I you? Has you, mind? you know what? I think because growing up, meh, one would be bullied. So it would be, as I, as I grow, I thought, no, I'm not easily shaken anymore. As you grow, I don't know, you just get the thick skin. And mm. yeah, you, and once you get closer to God, you have more faith also. So I, I'm not really shaken. I'm not bothered what the next person thinks or says. Because at the end of the day, there is a clientele I'm trying to reach. And if you are not that, then you can stick to your negative lane. I want people who are positive. I want to speak to people who are down and I want to uplift them. So whatever people say, it really doesn't matter. You know what I mean? So, so did you always think of yourself as an entrepreneur that you were going to start a business someday? Yeah, I've always been business minded. Um, I was always, you know, selling on the side. Like I, I always had a side hustle, going to work, just to have money for petrol or whatever the case may be. So just stuck at a nine to five, of which I don't like. <laughs> yeah. I don't like nine to five, but you know what? Now that I think about it, one has learned a lot from a nine to five. You can't really say it's um it's a bad place to be because you have to yeah. learn yeah it either you need to absorb whatever so that's what I did I I absorbed you know being into this in the call center industry dealing with different you know clients over the phone so yeah looking back I can say that I've actually you know learned a lot you know being resilient being understanding to people because I had to, um, I was a collector, you know, so people are, very, are really struggling, are really struggling financially and in other ways. So, yeah, I, I, I really, you know, wanted to start a business. Oh, that's incredible. Thank 
Thank you so much, Mpumi, for your story. I'm trusting that a lot of people will be inspired by what you had to share. Thank you so much for having me. And I pray that God blesses you because also you're putting, you know, people's stories out there. You're also using your time and your data. I mean, it means you're also a very caring person, you know. So I, I pray that God continues to use you to find people um, like myself, you know, who want to mm-hmm. be out there. Yeah, who wants to be out there? So thank you so much for also finding me. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Thank you if you've already subscribed. Now click on the notification button so you can be notified when a new video is uploaded.